Hi, uh, my name is Katie Montgomery and I work at the Ohio State House Museum. I am uh, the Educational Services and Collections Manager and I am here today to talk to you about the Ohio First Ladies. Now, this is kind of a broad term. Um, we say Ohio First Ladies because um, these ladies had their husbands called Ohio home. Many of them did call Ohio home themselves, um, but not necessarily all of them. And we'll talk about that as we go through um, our first lady. So we have eight um, presidents from Ohio who have a big connection to Ohio. And um, the very first one is William Henry Harrison. Now we are standing in front of the painting of the Treaty of Greenville. And we chose to start our tour here because it has William Henry Harrison in the painting. Now his wife um, was Anna Tuthill uh, before she was married, and Harrison is her married name, of course. Anna was born July 25th, 1775, so she was born right before the revolution started in 1776. Um, her father was a very important um, man in New Jersey, um, and her mother actually passed away pretty soon after she was born. Um, so she was taken by her father um, in the middle of the Revolutionary War, he wanted to get her to his parents' home um, so she could be taken care of by her um, paternal um, grandparents. And so he had to get through the British lines in order to do that. So in order to do so, because he wanted to continue fighting for the revolution, he donned a British uniform, um, took Anna, who was about four years old at the time, um, put her on a horse and they rode through the British lines, which was very um, risky at the time, to get to um, his family's home in New Jersey. Um, and so once he got there, he gave her into the care of his parents. Um, and that's how she was raised most of the time. Um, by the time that Anna was a little bit older, um, she had gone through school. She had been to boarding school um, in um, by um, Isabella Marshall's Grand School. She was the first first lady to receive a formal education, by the way. Um, but after graduating from that boarding school, she went with her father who was moving west and her new stepmother. So she went to the Ohio Territory. So that's how she came to call Ohio home. Um, and then Anna, while she was in Ohio, she was actually staying with her um, sisters while their home was being built in Ohio. So she was staying with her sister in Lexington, Kentucky, um, with her stepmother as well. Um, and when she was there, she met acting Captain William Henry Harrison. Now in this painting, William Henry Harrison is the gentleman holding his hat behind Anthony Wayne, who's the central figure on the right side. So that is William Henry Harrison. Um, when they met, um, she uh, apparently fell hard and he did as well. However, her father didn't think that he was really up to snuff. He wasn't sure that a soldier could really take care of his daughter. Um, but it turns out um, they were very passionate. They wanted to get married. And so um, there are differing accounts on whether they eloped while her father was out of town or whether begrudgingly he accepted their marriage and they got married in his home. So we actually don't know what happened, um, but they did get married um, when she was 20 years old in North Bend, Ohio. So that's how they got married. Um, they ended up having 10 children, which is a lot. It is actually the most children born to a first lady. Um, so uh, they had 10 children. Um, unfortunately, um, a lot of them did not um, live as long as Anna did. Now, we had a few years in Anna's life that were particularly hard uh, because she had a lot of loss. Um, so it was about eight years, and within those eight years, um, she lost um, she lost three sons, she lost William Henry Harrison, her husband, and she lost three daughters. So she had a very rough time of it um, right after and a little bit before the presidency. So when, when William Henry Harrison, of course, became president, he's famous for having the shortest term of the presidency, um, which was about three months. He went to the White House. Um, it is currently believed that he died because of um, infection from dirty water, um, which was common in Washington, D.C. But at the time that he came to Washington, D.C. for the inauguration, um, Anna, and this is Anna, um, was actually ill. She um, didn't feel well and she couldn't, didn't feel that she was able to travel with him. So she stayed home, tried to recover. She sent her daughter-in-law to Washington, D.C. to be the hostess for those um, three months. 
and actually she was packing up and feeling better and ready to finally make it to the White House when she got the news that William Henry Harrison had passed away. So um, she had definitely a rough time of it. Um, after his death, um, she lived with her sons. Um, her one son became a congressman and his son actually became president in the United States as well. So if you know your presidential history, Anna is the only first lady to be a spouse to um, the president and also a grandmother to the president. So she is definitely a really cool woman in that way. Um, and she supported the early Republican Party, which um, Benjamin Harrison was a part of because of its abolitionist tendencies. She actually encouraged Benjamin Harrison to um, join the Civil War. So that's pretty cool. Now, <laughs> Benjamin Harrison, um, the grandson of Anna Harrison, uh, married Caroline Scott Harrison. Now, Caroline Scott Harrison was born in 1832 in Oxford, Ohio. So she is a true Ohioan. Um, she um, married Benjamin Harrison, <coughs> excuse me, um, she married Benjamin Harrison when she was 21 years old at her father's home. Um, they met in Cincinnati. Um, her father taught at the farmer's school and that's where he attended for a period of time. Um, and they were married. Um, they had three children together, Russell, Benjamin, Mary Scott, and a stillborn daughter, unfortunately, in 1861. Um, she was the first lady in the White House um, and she is one of only three spouses um, presidential spouses to die in their time in the White House. Um, so unfortunately, the list is Letitia Tyler died in 1842, Caroline Harrison died in 1892, and then Ellen Wilson died in 1914. So um, she is unfortunately part of that club. Um, so while she was in Washington, D.C., um, she was suffering from tuberculosis. Um, she um, was officially diagnosed with tuberculosis in 1830, I'm sorry, 1891. Um, and in 1892, unfortunately, she passed away. Um, I just read a wonderful fact from the National First Ladies Museum um, that within that year, she lost seven inches on her waistline due to tuberculosis. So obviously she was gravely ill. Um, she did pass away at 60 years old. Um, and she is actually buried in Crown Hill Cemetery in Indianapolis, Indiana, which is where she and Benjamin um, lived was in Indiana. Um, she was a really cool lady, though. Um, she taught music and home economics, and she's actually one of the co-founders of the Daughters of the American Revolution, um, as well as she was its president for a time. Um, so that's pretty awesome. She, um, one of my favorite facts about um, Caroline Scott Harrison is that she helped raise money for Johns Hopkins School, um, but she would only do it conditionally if they would admit women to the school. And once they admitted women, she helped to raise money for that institution. So that's pretty awesome of Caroline Scott Harrison, definitely a forward-thinking first lady. So if you have any questions along the way, just type them in the chat box and we'll be happy to answer them about any of the Ohio first ladies um, or even about their um, spouses as well. Um, so just let us know if you have questions. But we're gonna move on to our third first lady. For the record, that is not chronological. Anna and Caroline did not um, serve in chronological order, as you could probably tell by the years. So our next first lady um, in our list relates to this wonderful and beautiful monument behind me. Um, this is the um, Vicksburg, <coughs> excuse me, the Lincoln and Vicksburg Monument um, Memorial. And it has Abraham Lincoln up top, um, but the important figure to us today is in this middle freeze section. Um, it's Ulysses S. Grant. Um, so Ulysses S. Grant was from Ohio. He was from North Bend, Ohio. Um, and um, he, um, excuse me, he is seen right here as a general um, in the Civil War, accepting um, the um, surrender of the city of Vicksburg. Uh, and so that's why we have him on this beautiful monument. Uh, but Julia Dent Grant was his partner in life and the, his first lady. Julia was born in 1826 in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and she actually was from a Southern sympathizing family. Um, so Julia is very unique in that way. She was from a very well-off family in um, St. Louis. Uh, she lived in a wonderful home called White Haven with her family. 
Um, she was very doted upon by her father and her mother. Um, so she lived a very um, entitled life at that time. Uh, Julia, as uh, father actually owned 36, I believe, slaves. Um, so it's very interesting that she eventually got married to Ulysses S. Grant. Now, how they met, um, Ulysses S. Grant went to West Point Academy, um, and he met her brother, Frederick Dent, um, at that time. And Frederick Dent wrote a letter to Julia um, where he said that um, Ulysses was pure gold. Uh, he said he is pure gold. And so when Ulysses S. Grant came to visit um, her and her fam, well, he came to visit him and his family, um, he met Julia and sparks flew. Um, she knew that she was going to marry him. She had to wait a little while uh, because of the Civil War, um, but they did indeed get married. She was 22 years old. They got married in 1848. Um, at the Dent family home, which was, of course, in Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri, um, historically, um, Ulysses S. Grant's family did not come because they did not condone him marrying into a slave-owning family. You can see today on differing beliefs. Um, they had four children. Um, her occupation, she was a homemaker. Um, she did become a politician in her own right, though she definitely tried to steer um, people in the direction that Grant um, believed. She was a staunch um, defender of her husband. She's quoted to saying, I became an enthusiastic politician. So Julia's kind of fun in that way. Um, she is actually the first first lady to um, have written her own memoirs. Book, please. <laughs> uh, and this is her memoir. So she was encouraged to write them by her children after, uh, of course, um, Ulysses S. Grant passed away due to throat cancer. Um, in 1885 and she lived um, for years after that and her, even though he had written his memoirs to support the family her children encouraged her to write her memoirs um, just to kind of go back on recollecting on um, these important times she didn't really want to have them published she kind of wrote them for her own um, aims and goals but eventually um, actually in 1975 they were finally published so um, she's not the first one credited to writing her memoirs because they weren't published until the 70s, but she is the first first lady to have actually written her own memoirs, which is kind of cool. Um, Julia Dent Grant died at 74 years old in um, Washington, D.C., actually, um, and she's buried in Grant's tomb in New York with Ulysses S. Grant. Do we have any questions? Okay, if you have questions about the first ladies or about anything you see, really, feel free to comment them in the comments section and I will answer them as best as I can. <laughs> oh, yeah, look. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna continue this way. So we are outside of the governor's office and you can see lots of different um, governor's portraits in this space and we'll spend a little bit of time out here as well. Um, we'll look at Rutherford B. Hayes' portrait while the governor's office gets unlocked. So right up here, second in is Rutherford B. Hayes. And we're actually going to go into the governor's office. Um, this space is not typically open to the public. Um, governor Mike DeWine is currently the resident of this space. And so as it is, his, um, it is not typically open to the public, but we're lucky enough to get a peek in. This is the governor's cabinet room. Let me take a peek real quick. No. All right. It's a mess. Um, so, this is the governor's cabinet room. Um, it is where the governor um, has his cabinet meetings with um, his 
cabinet, just like the president does. Um, so when he's not sure if he wants to sign a bill, veto it, or if he just wants to see what's going on between the different departments around the state of Ohio, um, he can have them all here um, during non-COVID times, typically, um, and.